Welcome, Jairo, to Metalarium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about the, your new band, the Troops of Doom, this new first record, Antichrist Reborn, and more things related to the metal world. Starting, <coughs> sorry, starting with this. How are you? Why are you decide to return with a new band in this new center? Because you formed Sepultura in the past and this kind of stuff. Okay. Actually, uh, who are is? It's a pleasure for me, first of all. Thank you very much for this interview. Uh, I was I was trying to find my way back to the 80s for a long time. Uh, I was playing in a band in the beginning of uh, of the 2000, 2000 from from 1998 to 2005. I was playing another band uh, called Eminence. And uh, we were touring in Europe and uh, South America, so I wasn't happy with that. And uh, I was in a kind of, uh, oh, we say in Brazil, like uh, uh, astral inferno. <laughs> it's <laughs> a, it's a, it's a, a kind of a time of your life, momentum where, where you are completely fucked up. And uh, I was in this in this time of my life. I was divorcing from my first wife. I was drinking too much. I was using drugs and etc. So uh, I, I decided to stop with my musician life, and uh, I stopped for a while actually. And I I stay without a band for for maybe six, seven, eight years maybe. So in 2018. I was invited to join my second band in my life called it The Mist. And then uh, we start to play in Brazil with uh, Ratos de Porão and other bands. And we make a tour in 2019. And I was completely clean and happy. So that's my, my way back. That's when I saw that I could play again, go on tour, go to the road and go on stage. And I, I could do that in a clean way, in a better way for me and for my family or my new family. So I decided to join some friends. And uh, so uh, we start the idea of putting uh, the troops of doom in the real world and, and took, took it off the paper. Actually, we start this idea from the Troops of Doom in 2015. Uh, was me, Alex Kaffer, our singer now, but he was only the bass player. Uh, Marcelo Vasco, the other guitar. And we didn't have a drummer in 2015 for this concept, for this idea. And uh, we invited a friend of us, uh, Chagrath, from Jimmo Borghi to make the voices. So everything was cool. Chagrat couldn't play alive. He just asked us, asked us to, to be a project, a studio project, because he already had uh, Jimmo Borghi. And also he was starting with the uh, Chrome Division also. So we decided to make this a studio project. But I wasn't happy anyway. So I need to put a band on the road because I love to play live. I don't like studio. So uh, I decided to not to do this. So I appreciate uh, Chagras and, 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 and send my best regards. But I need a, a guy who I need everybody to play alive and to go on the road with me. So in 2020, In the beginning of the pandemic, I I was in my home and and then Alex called me from Rio de Janeiro and he he told me like okay let's put that uh, idea uh, out of the paper and let's start a, a new band and I, I I will sing for you and play bass so now we 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 are playing like this uh, the setup of the band the lineup is it's it's okay for me now I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. 
okay, a long way to a long way to do this new band, trip, the Troops of Doom. And to, back to to the eighties, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This, this was the first idea um, I, I I I got in my mind. Uh, I would like to make something uh, to continue uh, the work I was doing with the Sepultura guys in the end of the eighties, in the eighty seven. So uh, I couldn't stay in the band that time. I couldn't play with them. I had personal uh, reasons to to not keep myself in the band with the uh, Sepultura guys. But we we are very close friends. We are like brothers. We we are family. So uh, from from that time to 2020 or, or 2018, I couldn't play uh, without you know using substances and and drinking too much. So. When I became more more conscient of, of, of everything and clean, and my kids uh, already uh, they they old already they have thirty years old and twenty six <laughs> years old. So I was like, okay, now I'm I, I'm done with that. I, I can I can come back and make a band, and I would like to do the same kind of music I was doing in the eighties because it's the same. Uh, I have the same influences. I, I love Slayer from the 80s. I love Celtic Frost from the 80s, Creator, Sodom, Possessed. So uh, I, I'm not too much into modern music and, and, and modern metal music. So I, I, I love this kind of, of music. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. OK, OK. I've listened in this new Antigas Reborn, Antigas Reborn many times to do this interview. And well, and especially for me is the capture the essence that you said from the 80s with this kind of stuff from the death, death with that death with trash metal stuff. But for you, what is the biggest strange that this Antichrist Reborn has compared to the a lot of albums, a lot of EPs, a lot of releases each day into the metal world because as you see as you see into the digital platforms many bands are releasing albums eps singles videos i think 20 20 releases per day is amazing to see how much <laughs> how much bands are now yeah it's it's amazing uh it's completely different from that time uh yeah this digital world <clears throat> uh, it's it's amazing and and it's not I don't know if it's good, but uh, we had a lot of because we have a lot of of releases. Uh, we know we don't have a lot of good releases. We go, we, we have a lot of everything. So most of this twenty releases per day aren't so good, and uh, I don't I don't know if uh, we can put our music. I mean, the troops of doing this in this comparison because. It's 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 natural. I I make I make the the death and trash metal from the eighties in a natural way. When I woke up in the morning, I want to play and I play. And what I do is it's death trash metal from the eighties. So I don't want to discover something new. I don't want to show people something new. What I'm showing is it's it's something I love and. It, the basis of, the, of of these songs and this kind of music is the 80s. It's, it's, it's the death and trash metal from the 80s. So I don't have new stuff to, to show. Maybe uh, we can show it in a, in, a, in a new way, but not it will be not a new kind of music. Because I'm not looking for that. We are not looking for that. We are not uh, trying to discover the fire or, or, or the will. We are we are trying to make the same kind of music I was making in, in, in I made in in the eighties in a better way, sure, uh, technically and especially in the in a better way of uh, recording of production. Uh, I didn't have uh, enough luck with the uh, Sepultura productions. I mean, best out of a station and more division. So. And and also uh, when we were writing the schizophrenia album before I left the band, uh, we made maybe half of this album. 
So we didn't have uh, producers in that time who understand Sepultura. We didn't have studios that uh, could put Sepultura in, in a record like we wanted to do in that time. So Sepultura, uh, they, 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 they took a lot of years to maybe more four or five years after my, I left the band. They took uh, four or five years, fear, years to make a record in the same way they wanted to, because they, find, they found American producers in that time or American studios, European studios. I, I, I never get the chance to, to hear my music in a, in, with a good production. So, well, sometimes they asked me to get out of the studio. So sometimes the, the, the guys in Brazil, the producers were like, uh, were rock. They, they, they didn't know anything about metal in the 80s. So rock for them was something different, was, I mean, Led Zeppelin. So when we get in the studio with the Sepultura, they were uh, amazed and, and frightened, like, what the fuck is that, man? Uh, you're gonna break my amplifier. Hey, hey, take your hands off this. Uh, don't play like this, man. Uh, your drummer will break my my drum kit. So uh, they they have afraid had afraid of us. So they didn't understand uh, our music. But now we have a whole market uh, and uh, uh, from death metal and 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 for death and and trash metal and industrial and everything. So. It's a relief for me. Uh, I'm very relieved because I can hear my, my songs and my music. And when I record something from that time, some of my songs with the Sepultura guys, and I recorded this again, uh, it's amazing because I can understand the song and show people the song the way I, I, I wanted to do in the 80s. So, but it was impossible. So. Max and Igor told me that a couple of months ago, like, well, we, you, you are recording uh, some of our old songs and it's amazing. I mean, we could make a record with this, a whole record with this. So uh, that, that's it. Uh, actually, we are trying to do the same kind of music we did in the 80s, but with a modern production. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I hear that, I feel the same. I I feel this. I felt the same because when I hear for the first time more division, more division, it was a more raw, more tough production. But now you need your first album, Anti Grace Reborn, is more clean. Is more. It's, it's like the production from the 2000s. It's it's inevitable to to sound like this because this is the new technology. This is new kind of stuff. It's it's inevitable. So. And why and why why I mean, what didn't you decide to release this anti crash reborn first and not the, the first two EPs at the beginning because you have the rise of heresy and the absence of liars your your first two EPs but I saw that you played into this into this EP or you covered this into the Sepultura songs but anti crash delusion is anti crash reborn is this is this a uh, very distinctive album. Okay, uh, we we. We start in the in the in the middle of in the in the beginning and middle of the the pandemia, so it was very hard to think about an album, uh, a full length album, and was the, the the very beginning of the band. So we need to to be sure that we are we were the right person to do that. So I decided to make uh, an EP, The Rise of Heresy, was was a kind of uh, business card to, to the market and to the people. So when we saw that everybody was loving that, we decided to do a full length. I wrote the, uh, with, with my, my partners, we wrote the, the Antichrist Reborn, maybe 90, 85% of the album was already done. And uh, and then we saw that uh, in 2021 we saw that the the, the pandemic world were and, and and this this COVID uh, will would be more uh, I mean 
would stay for more for a long time and 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 we didn't know it yet so but we, would we we can, can can we start to 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 work normally and 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 go on the on the street and not using masks no you we cannot do that so how long it takes we don't know so we as we don't know and as we didn't know how long it would take uh i mean the pandemic we decided to work on a new ep and not launch and and release the full length album at the time uh i heard some things about the the quadra uh album from sepultura it's a amazing album one of the best and uh, i was talking to the guys uh, andreas and paulo and they were completely sad about that so like gyro we made a, a perfect album a great album and we cannot play alive so we're afraid that people we will forget this until we 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 go on tour so uh we we had this fear also so i i decided to make another ep the absence of light because i was reading a, a book about Leviathan and, 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 and politics and stuff like that. And then we decided to make an EP and wait a little bit to put the, the full length Antichrist Reborn on market. So in 2022, in the beginning of this year, uh, we decided to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now talking again, talking again of the past, if we if we think about 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 support and supposing case that you stayed in Sepultura in the 80s to now, do you think Sepultura sound would have stayed with the the, the more vision sound or way? Not at all. I I I, I don't think so. Uh, I I I don't even I, I don't even think that uh, what I'm doing now it's the same kind of music I wa I. I would be doing with the Sepultura now, I mean, 35 years later, 30 years later. So, no, I don't think so. Uh, because we have, uh, we have our different paths, paths and, 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 and ways in life. So, they, they, uh, when, when Andreas replaced me in the band, it was very, very good for, for Sepultura. It was another step for them because Andreas was a way far away from me and in, in a technician so he was very technical in, in the guitar and i was uh completely uh dirty and 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 you know i i, I didn't make solos and shred guitar and stuff like this i was not studying guitar and andreas studied guitar every day from that time till now so he's very uh technical and 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 precise in what he's doing so he put his ideas in the band. He put his his kind of music in the band. Uh, we can see that uh, after Max left the band, and 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 Derek getting the band, so the band took another way. It's uh, it's impossible to make the same thing because we we have to respect, you know, the time and and and. The influences and and the changes in the influences and and people, so uh, different persons in the band. So I only do what I do now because I'm uh, I miss that kind of music. I miss a lot that kind of music. I I need to do that because I stopped that process of my life before I I, I before the accomplishment before I I I, I finish them. So uh, I had to do that. wasn't my option. Uh, was life. So I had to stop that process. And now I'm, I'm, I have to finish this process. So I, I'm doing this. But uh, if I was in a band, I don't think Sepultura would sound like the Troops of Doom, because uh, we were doing other things. I don't know what. But maybe we didn't. Uh, make an album like a Roots album also. I don't know, uh, because I, I will be the guitar player, not Andreas. So 
it's 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 different, you know. But mm. uh, but uh, uh, I found the guys, the 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 right guys now, who love this kind of music as I do, and wanted to do the same kind of music that I want to do. So uh, I think it's okay. Maybe the troops of doom can change uh, its music in a, in, a, in a couple years or, or more. I don't know, but uh, let, let let's see in the future. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So I've been seeing a, a, a detail, well, like a comparison in some way, because when I see your the cover art from Antichrist Reborn, I see the devil like with crosses, or Poseidon, Poseidon. Poseidon, uh, Poseidon stuff, this kind of stuff, and I try, I see the Morbid Vision cover, and it's very, very close to the, to very close to the same project with the devil inside, with the devil behind all the crosses, this kind of stuff. So for you, do you, do you, do you do this intentional, or perhaps the artists were, or perhaps Sergio, he, who, 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 who did, did this, who did this uh, cover art? They think they he thinks that is this cover art is like like a revival of your first for your first way, no? No, actually, I I asked him to do that. Uh, okay. It's intentional, yes. Uh, since we begin in the Turks of Doom, I when I choose this name, it's the name of one of maybe my my most famous song, Troops of Doom. Uh, with uh, the guys from Sepultura. Uh, I chose this name because of that, because I wanted to make a link uh, with this band and Sepultura from the 80s. So uh, I, I could, uh, I could uh, pick up any name, I mean, uh, but I, I would, I, 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 I wanted to do, to, to put this, this name on the band and from my music. And then I I was thinking about Easter eggs and things I could use to make a link between the Troops of Doom band and Sepultura band in the 80s. And this those links, they had to be from the 80s also. So uh, from the albums and from the atmosphere uh, when I was in the band. So uh, I would never use links from Sepultura from 80, 80 and till now because I'm not, uh, I was not in the band. So uh, I don't want to make something like uh, follow the Sepultura way. I want to do, I wanted to do something that I was doing that time. Uh, and I was in the Sepultura band. So. When I was in Sepultura, I, I start to make a kind of music and then I stop it. Then I, I made other kinds of other kind of music. I'm, I w went to uh, the Mist, and uh, it's a kind of dark uh, metal, but it's it's also trash metal from the 80s and 90s. But uh, from five, six, seven years ago till now, I wasn't happy with the uh, with the music way. So I my intention was to do the same kind of music from the 80s and I was in, in this band. So I start to use these uh, Easter eggs. So I call Sergio, the same artist from uh, Best of Devastation, and I ask him to use the same devil uh, we use in the first EP also. And I ask him to use the same color palette. So uh, we use the same orange and gray and white and black so uh it's intentional yes we we use some some parts of the lyrics from max and we use some some parts in our lyrics also and it's important to say that uh, the first the first thing i did when we decided to to join this band and to make this kind of of music was to call everybody. I call Max, I call Igor, and I call Paolo in 2020, and I ask them to to bless me, a kind of bless, a kind of license, but not officially, not nothing um, on the paper. Uh, and they were completely kind with me and completely great, and said, 
you have the right to do anything you want from that part of our life. So you can use anything you want. So uh, I'm, I, I'm happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. So uh, I other to tell that, I, that, I, that, that I've been seeing in your Antichrist Reborn is that you work with Peter Dagren for, yes. the, for the mission. So how was the experience to work with this amazing guy? <laughs> He's completely crazy, right? Everybody yeah. knows that. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's funny, he's crazy, he's very, very shy. So was the most difficult thing wasn't to get him on this project to mix. The most difficult was to have a photograph of him. I mean, we didn't want to use his photo from the Google. So I asked him to, I asked him to use a new photo. So okay. Could you take a photo in the studio and uh, so we can use in the media and, and, and the, the, the magazine? Oh, I don't want to do that. Pick up mm. some photo of me on the Google because he's <laughs> completely shy and, and he, he's crazy, but he's great. I just, I don't know what, I, I don't know yet uh, the, the repercussion and what people think about this album in this production. But uh, for me, it's the best work I, I, I ever done. And uh, he was a very great, very good producer. I love his kind of, of producing, producing in everything. He asked me to send, me and Marcelo, to send the guitar for him without destruction. So uh, we made like a acoustic guitar and he put his, his kind of, uh, of veal uh, so I think this kind of destruction is the best for you, your kind of sound. So uh, we appreciate that and we love it. We love it. He's a very smart guy. He's a very, very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been seeing around your discography, your discography that when well, your small discography now, The Rise of Heresy, it was released by Blood, Blood Blast Distribution on CD. Then the absence of light was released on cassette by Repulse Echo Records, then Metalized Distro and Blood Blast Distribution, Heaven, Hel Heaven Records, a lot of stuff there. And now you are with Alma Mater Records. So how was the transitions to, to the into these to, into these three labels? Okay, it was was very, very uh, uh, natural. First, the first album was from uh, the Black House. It's it's our own record label. It's a, a record label we start for the Troops of Doom because we don't have we didn't have too much partners at the first time. So uh, the first guy who asked me to do something was João from Helven, and uh, he asked me to make our albums in Portugal and. He could distribute in Europe, and then uh, I was very happy because uh, I love this guy and and his uh, record label. They they're not big, but uh, they're cool. And uh, and then uh, Francisco from uh, Mexico, from uh, uh, Metalized Distro, he asked me to also produce in, uh, produce some CDs and and stuff in Mexico. And it, it was OK for me. And he's a very kind guy also, very, very nice. And then uh, another guy from Greece, from Repulsive, asked me to do the, the, the tapes over there. So in the first two EPs, we made the, the license uh, deals with, this, with those uh, labels around the, the, uh, the world, uh, Mexico, Portugal, Greece, Brazil. So in Brazil, Silvio from uh, Voice Music, Silvio was the guitar from the original guitar from Corsus. Uh, he is a very close friend of mine, and he is one of the biggest uh, producers in Brazil now and, and, and labels. And he asked me to do it in Brazil and was a very good partnership. So in, in, in the last year, in the end of, of 2021, Fernando uh, Ribeiro from Unspell, he called me and he asked me to 
if uh, we could work together on a new album. He loved uh, the, the two EPs and he wanted to do the next album with us, so as a label. So he offered me uh, Alma Mater Records uh, from him, from, from Fernando and another uh, partner. And, uh, and the only thing we need, uh, the only thing we asked him was, okay, we need a very good producer from, from Europe and we like very much to do it, the new one with uh, Peter Tatgren. And uh, we wanted to keep our digital distribution with the Blood Blast because they are very kind with us, very, they believe in us since the beginning. And uh, we are very close friends from those people from Blood Blast, from Nuclear Blast. So we would like to do that and, and keep this distribution. And for Fernando was okay. He was okay. Uh, I don't have a very good digital distribution. I, I wanted to do it in a physical uh, product. So we, so we'll be releasing the new album in April 15th now in CD, cassettes and uh, uh, tapes and, uh, and, and CD also. And stills on Bloody Blast for digital distribution. Mm. So it was and Metro. No, no, we, we didn't have any kind of uh, problem with this transition. It was okay. Mm. Well, you found at a lot. You found well you, when you did your first your, your first rips into the Sepultura Morbid Visions, you create a massive wave to to do metal extreme here in Latin America, and I think. Sepultura at that time, Vulcano, Mutilator, and a lot of bands into the Bra in Brazil found the South American sound in in especially around the world. So for you now, you are one of the creators of this sound. So how do you see now the Latin American sound is 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 growing now, or perhaps is stagnated with the same of the same of the all all, all over the years? Yes. Uh... It's, uh, I see an evolution since then, but not as fast as I would like to. So uh, it's an evolution in, uh, but we in the, in the Latin America, we didn't work, uh, you know, fast enough, hard enough. Uh, we still have small uh, issues, uh, not in the market, but I mean, as 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 musicians, as 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 people, uh, we have these. Sometimes I don't like this guy, and he doesn't like the other guy, so I don't want to do that. In Europe and America, they are more into uh, business stuff. So, uh, okay, this is good. Let let's put this on market in the best way, so we can make money with this. Uh, in Latin America, we, we know everybody. I mean, everybody in Brazil knows everybody. Everybody in Peru knows everybody in Peru. So it's like a small village. Uh, I, I, and I say that in a, in a good way. I, I'm not saying that to say that we are uh, uh, the third world. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that. But we are a little bit late in this uh, market view, in this business view. Uh, we we still think about this. Ah, I don't like this, or I don't like this guy, or I don't like this person. So uh, I I don't see too much bands now in in the market uh, doing the right stuff. Uh, well, I, I it's a it's a shame for me, but I I don't I don't know bands from Peru uh, from 2000 year the year 2000 uh, until now. I don't know, but uh, I, I know that they exist, but I don't know which band uh, still is playing from the 80s and 90s. And I don't know if uh, they broke up or they still there or there's a new band in Peru. So it's a shame, but uh, somehow I have to look for it in the Internet. So I don't have uh, it's diff it's it's strange because Nowadays we have the internet. I can you can see me on the real time. 
uh, you can send me everything, photographs and everything if you want, music, if you want, in, in seconds. In that time, in the 80s and, and, and the beginning of 90s, we had fanzines on paper. So, but everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody in the time, uh, knew everybody. I mean, I, I knew the guy from Pentagram in Chile in, the, in 1988. So I had the, 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 the tape from Pentagram. And then I know the guy from Animal in Argentina. So I had the tape. Uh, I, 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 I had some, some contact in the, from the guys from uh, Control Machete. I don't know, they're from Mexico, I think. And then uh, Molotov and bands like this, hip hop bands and metal bands. And now with the internet, we don't have to keep in touch with anybody else. So yeah. it's because maybe we have a lot of stuff to do and a lot of bands. So it's more, sometimes it's, it's the technology, it's easy for us, but it keeps us maybe away from each other in, the, in a way. So in that time, I was expecting the guy from Chile to send me the tape one month after that, I got the tape from, from the mailbox and then I sent him a letter and Max was writing the letters and we sent to the guys in Chile. So, and 60 days after that, we received another answer, but we know the guys, we knew the guys. So not today. Uh, we have some bands coming back from the grave, like... Uh, yeah. Mutilator and Dorsal Atlantica, uh, Volcano. We have bands that stopped in a, for a while and now they're coming back. I, I, I say that in a good way, coming back from the grave, grave because people thought they're dead already, but they are still playing. And, uh, and this is good. This is good. And this, this, I think this shows us also that we don't want to see too much uh, modern stuff. We, we are not happy with the modern bands, maybe. So, uh, okay, Dorsal are back in, are back, Volcano. So I want to see that. I want to see because I love Volcano from the 80s. Maybe they playing the same stuff and that's it. Hmm. Okay, well, we are very close to end this interview, Jairo. And what are the future, what are the future plan that through the troops of doom has for this new Antichrist reborn. Perhaps a, a European tour, a North American tour, or perhaps a Latin tour this year, next year, or perhaps more more upcoming videos for the next okay. month. Okay, we we are producing uh, the third video from, from this album. We already released the first uh, Altar of Delusion, and then it's on uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, we will release the the Portuguese song from this album, A Queda, with uh, João Gordo from Ratos de Porão. We will release the, the lyric video on April 8th. And the album will be released uh, worldwide on April 15. And another video will come in the beginning of May from uh, another song, another single from the album. Uh, yes, we are, we have the intention to play uh, a lot. We are doing uh, our efforts to do more gigs in Brazil also. So we are, we are putting uh, our agenda for Brazil now and our manager is, it's, it's, it's uh, getting some dates for us. He, he we will play with the South Atlantic for, for six or seven gigs from now on to the end of this year. Uh, also, uh, Crisium and, and other bands, I don't remember, Nervosa. But uh, we are already uh, working on a European tour and a Latin tour because Latin America is very, very important for us. Uh, and our manager is a very experienced guy in the Latin America tours. He works with a lot of bands and uh, he made a lot of, uh, he makes a lot of tours in, in, in Latin America from Mexico to, to the, the, 
the very end of Argentina. So he will do it uh, with the troops of Doom now. So we, we are just waiting for the for the record to to be released. And we we waiting for for another band, a biggest band, so we can join with them and open act for them in in Latin America. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, well, we are as I said, we are very close. And what is your opinion about now the digital platforms? Because as as you said, there there's there is a lot of one well, there is a lot of mistakes into these digital platforms because the people is not connected with the mute with the musician like the like in the past with the tape trading this kind of stuff but now with this matter the new generation prefers to hear the music with with one two three or maximum four songs into the digital platform so what why the albums now doesn't have the same impact compared to the eight six sixties a 70s 80s and 90s and what does bank needs to do to improve or to encourage the listen of all songs in an album yeah that's that's a that's a real problem for for me also uh, i don't know but uh everything it's uh uh it's so easy nowadays so we we have too much information and uh and then People can listen to three songs and throw the bands out and OK, I'll make my own set list here and then they make their, their playlists and with uh, three bands from Sepultura, three, three music from Sepultura, two songs from the Troops of Doom, six from Slayer. So I have my own record here for, <laughs> for today when I go to work and put in my car. It's completely different from OK, we did that in the past. Uh, I did that in the past. Uh, I record some some tapes and uh, I put two songs from this band, three songs from the other band. So we we did that mix also. And yeah. some guys were like, hey, Jairo, could you lend me that uh, cassette from you uh, with uh, with Slayer, Metallica, Untrax and everything? OK, here, uh, here, here we are. But uh, Today it's uh, how do how do we say in, in English uh, dis discartable? Uh, mm -hmm. You know when you throw throw away when you throw uh, that, that's what throw away. <laughs> like a plastic, it's like a plastic cup. You know you you drink and then you grow throw away. Yeah. So today everything it's like that. Right? Yes. Uh, everything is like that. Even uh, sometimes relationships are like that. So. Uh, uh we have a date of validity so i don't like that I, i'm a kind of uh, old guy in the old-fashioned way and uh so we had to do that i mean the digital platforms we had to use it because it's the market uh, i don't want to put my band in in a, in a underground basis only and play for my, my my very close friends in small places no i want to play big festivals i want to play for everybody in, in other countries and uh so we need that digital platforms uh, distribution it's uh but it's the, the the guys from today they they are okay with that but not not me or maybe not you maybe i don't know but maybe in the back of you over there you have some uh cds and and vinyl <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot. So, uh, me too. So we like to, you know, the physical way. We like yeah. to to put our hands on a, on a record and open the the vinyl, vinyl, or and uh, and then we see the big photo and then we read the songs. We can read the lyrics. We we have these these uh, parts and posters. So that's what we like, and we use it too. I don't even have a, a Kindle. I, I cannot read a book on a Kindle. I don't like it. Not, not only because it's modern, but I tried, but I don't like it. So I have to buy a book, a paper book, and I want to keep it on the side of my bed. So uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, we are doing both way we are working as the market wants to so we put it in a digital way and uh we are also put in the physical way in a physical format 
for our fans and friends and people who like to 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 buy it and to collect it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, Hiram, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one as I did. And thank you very much for your time. Your last album is a great one. Congratulations for that. Any any last words that you want to add to your Latin American fans that expect a long time to see new material from you? I think <laughs> since, the, since the 80s. And Metalino readers. Okay, I would like everybody to join us in our, on our uh, medias and uh, so Instagram, the Troops of Doom, and YouTube uh, dot com slash the Troops of Doom, and uh, and hope I really hope to to go on tour. I I, I made some gigs in uh, in Colombia uh, already, but not with the Troops of Doom, with another band in the past. On the Hockau Park uh, Festival, but I, I really would like to make gigs and for our fans and friends in the whole Latin America countries. So uh, stay tuned. We wanted to do that, and we will do it until the next year for sure.